So my name is Luca Compagna. Thanks a lot for being here. I'm part of uh, SAP, uh, and uh, SAP has uh, a team working on security research. And I will uh, animate this presentation with a few colleagues from different partners or few peers from different partners that uh, uh, we, we work together in an European project, I would say more in a, in a, in a way. And what we will talk about are uh, testability patterns uh, for uh, web applications. So is a, is a kind of notion of testability as it, was for, as it is for software applied in the context of security and privacy. So a few words about myself. Uh, I've been working in research since a long time uh, on security protocol analysis, security testing with dynamic analysis, and nowadays more on static analysis. Maybe, I don't know if you can hear me well. Uh, so as I said, what you will see today is part of uh, an European project. So we have to thank the European Commission for funding us uh, and to do this, uh, this kind of research. You see all the partners that take place in this project uh, in the slides. Uh, I think I have the laser here. No, it doesn't work. Give me just a second. Is visible? Yeah, okay. So you have partners from academia, industrials, and all together we work in this project, uh, bringing together different uh, skills and uh, expertise. And uh, what we have been doing, well, essentially, as I said, we are trying to take this notion of testability from the software engineering community and applying it in the context of security and privacy. That is pretty novelty, as far as we know. We, there was nothing else before us in this respect. And uh, uh, essentially what, uh, what we see and what I guess you, you would agree on is that uh, uh, testing for security and privacy is something challenging. And uh, so what we, we want to do is to try to identify these challenges, okay, and then uh, to uh, measure these challenges and uh, uh, discover these challenges in real application and possibly remediate these challenges. We had uh, some uh, good research results last year and we publish paper at NDSS in this respect. And uh, uh, we are going to see some of these results today. And so we, we, we decided to start an, an OWASP project uh, that for which we have uh, first concrete results of static analysis, and this is what we will discuss today. Uh, but we hope we will be able to, uh, to move on also uh, and going on dust, privacy, and what we are targeting also is machine learning. So there is a project that we started, and uh, we hope uh, some of you will be willing to join and to help us in this, uh, in this, uh, in achieving this vision. You, you have, uh, yeah, this QR code. If you want to scan it, you will, uh, it will bring you to the, uh, to the, to the OWAS testable project, essentially. All right. So testability pattern for SAST. This is our uh, first concrete results we achieve in the project. Uh, I don't want to go in a kind of a formal definition of what testability patterns are. I prefer to present some, some examples. Um, but if you want to have technical details, you can go in this uh, paper, okay? And there you will have uh, the, the, the technical uh, information. Or you can ask ChatGPT, mm -hmm. something we tried. So we ask, uh, what are testability patterns for SAST? And uh, it replied with something that, I mean, if you read through it, best practices for code, that makes it easy to test using static analysis tools. The goal is to make it easier to automatically identify and analyze code for potential bug or other issue. So the definition, I mean, actually, is not so far away from what we want. The strange thing is that our research is 2022, and ChatGPT has a knowledge base till 2021. So the question is, how the hell was able to, to, to tell us what the stability pattern for static analysis are, since they were not there before? But actually, I mean, then we try to ask what are the stability pattern for whatever, kitchen, uh, etc. And it was the same answer, but you just remove static analysis with kitchen or whatever, and it's the same thing. So this was just the entertaining part. Let's go on something more concrete and technical. Static analysis. So I guess many of you have been working with static analysis. I will just spend a few words to, to say what it is about. You have a piece of code of an application. You give it uh, an input to, to a tool, to a SAS tool, and the SAS tool will provide you back some findings in a, in a form of traffic lights. Um, and these findings, actually, uh, a very good example are injection vulnerability. So the static analyzer will try to discover, to detect injection vulnerabilities in the code that has been provided in input to, to it. How does it work? Well, how static analyzer try to discover this kind of vulnerability? Well, they they have to identify the, the areas in your code where an attacker can introduce some input. Input that can be attacker controlled at that point, 
And then what the tool does, try to propagate this uh, data value in the code, and at some point checking whether the, the, this value is ending up in a dangerous operation. That is what we call a sync. So the input will be the source, the, 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 the dangerous operation will be the sync, and everything you have in between is this data flow that the tool needs to follow up. But following that data flow is not always easy. And uh, clearly, if the tool is not able to see some of this connection, uh, the, the flow is lost, the tool is not able to report that vulnerability. So back to the previous slide. So when that happened, uh, the tool is still providing a green traffic light, but perhaps there is just a bug that was not, uh, uh, let's say, uh, properly uh, provided by, properly reported by the tool, just because the data flow was broken somewhere. And so in our research, what we are trying to do in this project is uh, uh, try to understand which are those uh, code artifacts, code instruction, that really impact the tool, in this case, static analyzer tool, but we want to do the same thing for dust, for privacy, etc. And then we want to say, we, we would like to measure these obstacles. So which are the tools that uh, are uh, for which the obstacle is really a problem, and which are the tools for which it's not. Because not all the tools behave in the same way. Mm? They have different strategies. They might decide to put a threshold somewhere, to, to, to cut a certain path because it's too long, whatever. So not, not all the tools behave in the same way. And last but not least, what we want to do, and this is really a kind of differentiator for our work with respect to other benchmark, is uh, we don't want just to measure, but we would like to be able to discover this obstacle in real applications. Because if you are able to discover those, then you can uh, uh, put the finger for the developer and say, here is where the tool will be, will have trouble. Here is where the tool uh, will face an obstacle and will not be able to analyze your code. Okay? Uh, and if we discover those, if we are able to discover those obstacles, then it's the first step to also try to remediate those obstacles. All right. So let's see a, a concrete example. This is a, an old uh, <coughs> vulnerability reported. There is, there is a CVE for it. Uh, you can see here there is an instruction required once. It's PHP, but I mean, it doesn't matter the language. So required once is a dangerous operation because it will import a PHP file and it will execute this PHP file. And actually, the, the PHP file that will be executed depends on the value of this variable. So this is a clear dangerous operation, and so this is something that the static analyzer needs to be able to recognize as a sync. So the static analyzer probably has a sync list, hmm? and it needs to be comprehensive in the number of dangerous operations. Otherwise, if you don't know that it's a sync, then again, the vulnerability will not be reported. Let's see a bit how this variable is propagated back in the program. Uh, so this is the sync. We go back, and we see that uh, this variable is depending on another variable called act, there is just some uh, concatenation here, and now the, 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 SAS the SAS analyzer, the SAS tool, needs to be able to propagate what we call the tainting, so this is a tainting capability, it needs to be able to propagate backward in this case, uh, the data flow uh, from this variable to this other variable, and it has to continue, right? So if we look at this variable, it depends on a function, here, the tool needs to be able to understand more or less what happens inside that function. If there is any input parameters that is uh, connected to the uh, return value, etc., etc. And if we continue backward, we see that at some point, uh, this uh, uh, function gpc get string is here, is uh, using a dynamic call. Okay, so this is a classical example of ref reflection. So the developer decided to use a dynamic call to invoke, well, a kind of precise function. So he knew, or she knew, which function he wanted to, to invoke, uh, but rather than uh, calling it statically, he decided to use a dynamic call. I don't know why, but it is like that. So now if we try to understand how the flow should propagate back, well, this function gpcget should be called, right? And here is where the tool needs to propagate again back the, the backward, the information from that was originally in this sync. Okay. But since there is a dynamic, dynamic call, here is where a tool could get confused, for instance. So if we go now in this CP, GPC get, it's here. We see that, that inside there is a, an if then else something, and there is this uh, post uh, 
function. But essentially, that will take uh, from a request of, of a user, hmm? a post request from a user, it will take a certain, the, the, the value of a certain parameter. And the parameter depends on name, the variable name, and the variable name is nothing else than uh, what was written in these arguments. And these arguments, there is this dollar name again, that is action, that is this action thing. Okay, so trust me, what will happen here? Okay, that is uh, what we will call a source because it's something that uh, the, the attacker can influence, can put some input there, okay? And we saw that this input will flow till this sync. So essentially the attacker here is able to influence which PHP file will be loaded and executed, right? Any question till this point? No, perfect. And then this is what we call a, a source. And uh, now the attacker, what can do? He can do a post request uh, to this uh, website uh, and he can put in the action uh, uh, parameter some payload, all right? And that payload will uh, uh, influence the file that will, uh, will be executed. This is a clear file inclusion uh, uh, problem, okay? We tried a number of tools, SAS tools in our arsenal uh, against this, uh, this application. And uh, basically, we were not able to discover the, the vulnerability. And we believe, I mean, from, from what we discussed before, that the problem is this dynamic call. Okay? But now, how can we be sure about that? And here is where testability patterns come into play. So what we do in the creation of our testability pattern, can you see or is this too small? It's okay? Okay. Um, so essentially... Here you see the skeleton of uh, our testability pattern. It's something very simple. You have a source. It's not the post parameter that we are taking here, but it's a get. It doesn't matter. And then we have a very, let's say, stupid operation. It's just propagated from one variable to another. Okay. And then we have a sync that is just a printing. Okay. Of the variable that was controlled by the attacker. Okay. This is a classical cross site scripting. If you run any static analyzer on this little piece of code, they will report the vulnerability, okay? So this is the baseline. And now we want to understand whether our call user funk array using this specific way is a problem or not. So what we do is uh, in place of that B equal A instruction, we put the call user funk array with a constant, okay? And some parameter in input. And we also add some com code companion because here we need a function, essentially. So we add this function, whatever, that is just reporting back whatever it is input to this function. Okay? All right. So now if we run the static analyzers on it, we can see that most of them are not able to discover the vulnerability. That, sh that is here. I mean, this, this is still the cross-site scripting that we saw before. It's just that we add an obstacle for it. So the only reason why the static analyzer is not finding anymore that cross-site script, that, that cross scripting is because of that obstacle. Okay. And this allows us to measure the tool precisely on that obstacle. Hmm? And you can see here there is also a commercial tool that was not able to do that. And just to, to have a kind of verification validation uh, um, thing, what we did is if you transform this dynamic call in a static one, so rather than using this call user funk array reflection uh, instruction, we just call directly the function that the developer wanted to call. Okay. Well, if we do that, the obstacle is not anymore there. And the tool, the commercial tool now is able to discover the vulnerability. Okay. So this is a very simple example of how you can remediate that obstacle. All right. But also uh, we can see that this uh, uh, obstacle is, uh, is pretty precise. We know exactly what we are looking for. So we can create what we call discovery rules. Uh, we do that uh, with the uh, yarn, okay? But it can be done in different ways, okay? And essentially what we want to do is to find in, in real application that, op that, that kind of obstacle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we saw one pattern, one instance. We can create many variants. Uh, here you see some examples where rather than using a constant, in the dynamic call, we put a variable. The variable was just assigned to a constant before. So here what the tool should do is a little bit of constant propagation in order to discover the vulnerability. Okay. And you can do something more by adding, for instance, I don't know, some concatenation and so on and so forth. 
And of course, you can do the same thing rather than for, rather than, uh, than uh, for a dynamic call for other kind of uh, obstacles that you believe will prevent the static analyzer to do its proper job. And here you see again the structure of the pattern. So again, is a source, a sink, and you put the obstacle in between. Okay. All right. So this is what we did actually. And we created uh, uh, a catalog of these patterns for uh, uh, three languages, PHP, JavaScript, and Java. Uh, this catalog is available for uh, all of you. So you can go on, on GitHub and uh, access to it. Uh, there are more or less a bit more than 100 patterns for each one of these languages. Yeah. Not all the patterns are at the same level of maturity. Maybe I can quickly jump on the, on the uh, repository. So here you see the repository. And if I scroll down a bit, If I go for PHP, for instance, you see that some of these patterns have a kind of versioning uh, associated. So when you see version 1.0, it means that that pattern that we did for our research were, was also reviewed in the context of our project. So it, it tends to be more mature than other patterns. So it, it, rather than only two eyes, it's very likely that four eyes or six, six, six eyes were looking at this pattern to make it a bit more, uh, you know, uh, precise and to avoid mistakes. Hmm? But there are many others that are still in draft. Okay. So if some of you is interested in this work, wants to contribute, uh, I mean, it's needless to say that uh, we would really appreciate that. Helping in maturing this pattern, in creating new ones, because for sure there are many that are missing. Okay. But all this work can help us or can help, I, we hope, can help the community to better understand which are the obstacles for static analysis and perhaps uh, how we can remediate some of those. Back to the slides. So what do we want to do with these patterns? Well, one thing we want to do is uh, to measure SAST, right? So you can imagine you have a uh, version uh, X of a uh, SAST tool and uh, you run it uh, against this pattern, uh, is able to support some of them, others is not able to support, and maybe next release will be able to support a bit more. Okay, and so on and so forth. Hopefully, uh, we will get uh, a kind of uh, uh, better picture, uh, better measurement over time. But another thing we want to do is to be able to discover this pattern in real application. And as I said, what we want to do there is to create discovery rules. We have already some in place, hmm? uh, but uh, some of the patterns, for instance, do not have this discovery rule. And uh, in our repository, we created, uh, uh, let's say, information how to write down these discovery rules so that uh, uh, this pattern can really be discovered in real application. And last but not least, we would like to remediate this pattern, to remediate this obstacle. We saw just an example with that simple transformation. There are things that uh, are more complex. There are things that cannot be remediated, okay, without the help of developers. That probably will never happen. But say there are many things still that can be done. Um, and so, for in order to um, to help us in those operations, we created a small framework in Python. Uh, that is uh, another repository associated with the one that uh, that we saw before. You have the link here, and uh, uh, that in that that uh, framework essentially allow you you to uh, run automatically a SAS measurement, or to run these discovery rules that that we associated with the patterns. Mm -hmm. And you you can give it a try also here if you are interested to help a bit on uh, the development of the framework. There are many functionalities that can be added also here. Uh, we will be very happy. Um, here you have some example of what you can do. Okay, you can take the framework. Uh, there is a, there is a Docker container that uh, is a Docker compose actually that you can run so that uh, you, you know we we try we try to remove a bit of Ardol in in uh, installing this this thing so that you can give it a try immediately. Uh, at the moment there is CodeQL uh, integrated. Uh, um, at SAP, uh, we have more tools integrated because we, have, we, we are using it uh, for, for some internal purpose, uh, but uh, they are commercial. So we, we, here we are using the, the open source version of, uh, of uh, CodeQL somehow. So it's, and by the way, what we are providing is just the, let's say, the, the classical links to the CodeQL uh, um, uh, GitHub repositories so, so where everybody can, can take it. But so you can use CodeQL, you can add other tools. Mm. If those are open source tools, you can uh, add uh, those wrappers that you created inside the framework so that others also can use those tools at that point, and so on and so forth. You can do a discovery. Here, for instance, we are, uh, okay, the, the first line we were running 
the measurement for the language JavaScript targeting the pattern one and two using the tools CodeQL. Okay, here you could add other tools if you like. And here we are doing a discovery. Uh, we are targeting this application. Okay, and the language is PHP. We want to use all the patterns, so we want to try to discover all the patterns, and in particular those patterns that were not supported by either tool one in version one or tool two in version two. This is more or less what this instruction is saying. Okay, so we got some results, and here you have some spoiler. What we saw is that, yeah, uh, the, the many SAS tools struggled on our patterns. Uh, we saw that actually those patterns are not our invention, they are real. In, in real application, you can find them. Yeah? And uh, we saw also that uh, you can improve the testability actually for SAS by doing those transformations that we saw and by doing other things. So let's go into some of these results. Um, here you see uh, the measurement we did last year. So uh, uh, we will uh, repeat this experiment over time. Uh, here you see the results for uh, PHP and JavaScript. And without entering too much into the details, here you see for PHP we have four tools, uh, six tools, sorry, four open source and two commercials. And you see that uh, uh, none of them is able to support more than 50% of the patterns. Okay? For JavaScript is a bit better, 60, a bit less than 60%. Okay? Um, in terms of discovery, here we did our study only on PHP. Okay, so is a, is a research problem, is a research, research project. Uh, what we did is a proof of concept. Huh? So we are working on this, but indeed, if we are able to build a community, uh, probably we can get out much, much more of, of, of this. But so just by running uh, the discovery rule we created for the pattern for on, on PHP, we ran it over uh, more than 3000 applications from GitHub and the source code ester. Uh, we try to use in GitHub uh, different popularity ranges. So to take the most popular, the medium popular application and the low popularity application. So that we, we have a kind of, uh, you know, uh, information that tries to target different typology of, of applications. And uh, here you can see the results. Don't, don't look perhaps at the graph, but takes, uh, you, you can just look at this table. In average, we saw that every 20 line of code there was an obstacle. So that, that is pretty scary. Yeah? Also, um, I mean, we try to look at the situation when you have commercial tools, because they are one, those that perform better. I mean, also because there is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, engineering that you have to put there. A lot, uh, so, so, so actually, this is why you pay that license, right, at the end of the day. Um, um, uh, and so we saw that uh, even the, the most uh, performant tool, the top performer, was having an obstacle every 200 line of code. That's still, it's quite a lot. So this means you go in 200 lines and then the tool gets some obstacle and it doesn't know how to proceed. So we did uh, uh, some experiment about improve, how to remediate these things. We did two transformation experiments. One was manual and one was completely automated. I will, will just mention uh, the one we did uh, automatically. We took only five patterns. Okay, five. And we created an automated rule to transform the pattern into something else. Hmm? Something else that uh, is equivalent hmm, in terms of vulnerability discovery in the context of SAST. So we did that. We, we applied on the 3,000, uh, three, yeah, three, the more than 3,000 application in our data set. We did that for PHP. And the, the static analyzer were reporting more than 9,000 new findings. Okay. So there, uh, I mean, there is always this problem of false positive, etc. But uh, that is a bit uh, kind of uh, intrinsic to the problem. I mean, I, I don't know how, how much it can be done. Th there is something that can be done, but uh, clearly that is a problem that uh, is, is a different kind of problem. But we, we analyzed 2,700 of this finding, and we discovered 370 true positive that, that before were not, were not discovered. We reported them. And many of them were confirmed, others, well, some, some project didn't answer at all, um, whatever. Uh, but some of them were also impacting popular GitHub projects, so to, to show that this is a real problem uh, that, that we are having, and to show that there is something that can be done. Five patterns that we only transformed, and these are the results. So if we are able to transform more, 
we will be able to, you know, to increase the, 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 the power of a static analyzer in creating this data flow at the end of the day. What else can we do? Well, of course, we can improve the SAS tools, right? So it will not be us, perhaps it will be the SAS tool owner doing that. Uh, and also something else we saw uh, and we started experimenting with is that many SAS tools accept uh, what are called custom rules. So you can uh, uh, create a custom rule to help the tool understanding a certain specific instruction that was not in his uh, model, say. Uh, and so actually that is an easy way, right? You create a pattern. This is my obstacle. And now I create the custom rule that goes with it in order to solve it. And every time the tool is facing that obstacle, it will use the custom rule to get over it. So these are the three remediation that uh, uh, we are uh, investigating um, and that I hope we will have some results in the forthcoming years. So back to the call for action. Uh, there is this new project. Join the project, join our community, contribute to the two repositories. Uh, uh, there is a, a lot to do, uh, improving the testability patterns, creating new ones, uh, helping on the framework, uh, targeting other programming languages, uh, uh, integrate your own uh, SAS tool or integrate uh, some of the good open source tools, uh, whatever. So, uh, yeah, we are really hoping that uh, uh, some of you will, will help in this, uh, in, in, in this journey. And now, uh, I would like to do a small uh, role play game. So, um, as I said, this is the work done in an, in an European project with many other partners. Some of the representatives of this partner are here. And they are actually, uh, interesting enough, uh, representing different roles. So I would like to, uh, to discuss a bit how we believe the project uh, can help each one of these different role persona. So, Lucas, if you want to come on stage. Thank you. So Lucas is uh, is working at uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's quiet. <laughs> okay. Quiet AI, yeah, formerly known as uh, Shift Left. Um, we are we are uh, building the the Yearn code analysis and code querying tool. Maybe some of you have used that before. And so yeah, we are in the market of application security. We are uh, building a commercial tool which you can use to w run queries on your code base continuously uh, to, to find vulnerabilities during your development process. And yeah, I'm a PhD student with them. I'm a security researcher, but at, at Quiet AI, Shift Left, um, we want to make sure that our tool we provide to you is able to uncover, yeah, everything there is in, in the best case, of course. So uh, what that means is that we can use these... Um, these patterns we're researching on, we're finding, um, uh, you know, we have found during this project to, to test our own tool, to see whether our own, our own tool can deal with these patterns, wh whether it can overcome these patterns and look uh, beyond them. One integral part of the of, uh, tool of Yarn is the uh, capability, uh, capability to perform data flow analysis. As Luca mentioned in the beginning, um, yeah, finding this path from, from a source to a sink and overcoming everything which is between them. And <clears throat> so, yeah, what we want to do, we can measure our SAS tools against these patterns and see how many it can overcome and where there is something we can improve on. And um, it also helps us to prioritize Right, if we see or or maybe gain an edge over the competition and like yeah, the role playing as a SAS tool developer, I wanna maybe contribute patterns I have seen during development of my own tool, which we had problems with, uh, with, but which we have overcome through yeah thorough engineering. We can contribute these patterns to the back to the community, test other SAS tools on these, and see. Um, whether they might have problems with this thing we found ourselves during development. And, yeah, more, um, critically, we can also, also question and improve patterns, uh, yeah, where our own tool underperforms. Um, at the moment, we're in the nice position that we're the, yeah, very, um, that we are very in this, research and that we are, the, we have contributed already a lot um, on, on the paper, on the research, found a lot of these patterns 
And we are also using the, the query, uh, querying capabilities of the urine tool to find these patterns in, in your code. Um, yeah, but there's always room for improvement. And that is something I can, as a SaaS tool developer, gain from this community, from this project. So maybe some of you are also working uh, on your own SaaS tools in a company which provides or um, builds their own SaaS tools. And then you can use this community to to check your tools, you check your capabilities and maybe provide back to the community when you see something which is very hard to do. Excellent. And I think next would be Malte, that uh, is a PhD student uh, at the Technical University of Braunschweig. Probably I pronounced it in the wrong way. I will no. never be able to do that. <laughs> but uh, uh, so Malte will play the role of the web developer here. Yeah, suppose I'm a web developer and that I want to test my website, my application for security with a SAS tool, right? Um, so I could use our framework and our testability patterns um, to identify the patterns in my code base. So I can improve on um, the capabilities of the tool to discover uh, vulnerabilities if I can find these patterns and I can re remediate them. And I can also use um, our measurements to decide on which SAS tool to use. If I know that uh, my code base contains lots of patterns of this particular kind, and I know from our measurements that uh, no, commercial tool number two supports these patterns more than the other tool, I can use that information to pick the right SAS tool for my purposes as a web developer. And that's what I can gain from this. And on the other hand, what can I, as a web developer, um, do to help our project? Um, if I encounter um, issues with SAS tools in my uh, daily job as a developer, I could uh, formalize them as such a new or um, variant of a testability pattern to help back and um, increase the set of patterns we can measure. And um, sometimes I might also encounter patterns that cannot be removed from my application. And in these uh, cases, it's really interesting to make them as precise as possible to help other people encountering the same problems, to measure them um, precisely. Yeah. Expanded. Yeah, actually, I mean, this is a very good point. So sometimes you cannot solve the problem, right? So, but the fact that you are aware that there is a problem, that there is an obstacle, can already, you know, bring you in a, in a position where you know in this part of the code, perhaps I have to do more code review. Uh, because the static analyzer will not be able to go into that. But not knowing it, uh, is probably not the best situation. So um, I'm going to play the, the role of, uh, of a guy at the sec security central team. Actually, at SAP, we have a, a security central team. So he's like uh, me on behalf of colleagues at SAP. And it's very similar to the, the, the situation of the web developer. But rather than doing that for your own application, you're doing that for you know all the applications that are in your organization. So here, what uh, what is the idea? Is that imagine you have uh, no, uh, your application in a kind of... Uh, uh, GitHub repository internal to your uh, to your company. Well, you can try to understand which are the most prevalent patterns. Okay, and at that point you can say, okay, uh, in the in the security uh, central team, you can try to remediate some of these, and you can come back to the development team saying, guys, if you start using this kind of remediation, if you rewrite your code in this way rather than that, your SaaS tool will be able to you know to provide you more accurate results. Uh, and this is something something you can do, right? Uh, also, um, part of uh, the decision in which tools to buy uh, also depends on the accuracy of the tool. It's not the it's not the only criteria that you have to use. There are many others: usability, uh, many others. But accuracy is one of them. And with this measurement, uh, you can try to understand which is the tool that best fit your. Uh, organization, right? Because you have many applications, you can see which are the main obstacles, and you can try to take the tool that better fits, better succeed in overcoming those obstacles. Um, and here again, the incentives are very similar to what Malte was saying. So if you see some patterns that are really prevalent in your organization, you cannot get rid of them. Well, you can start discussing with the community. You can say, okay, guys, do you have any, any fancy idea how to solve this, right? Because we would be really uh, looking forward to, to, to see that. Uh, and at the same time, if you are facing something specific, you can bring this to the community. So overall, we hope that by sharing this material, by sharing this information, we can improve the status quo for static analysis. And now I leave the, the stage for, to Matteo. It is uh, our last persona, an auditor. 
So good morning. My name is Matteo Meucci. I represent IMQ Mindnet Security. IMQ Mindnet Security was founded in 2007. So in 15 years uh, of aging, we are uh, we tested more than uh, thousands of applications. So in the real world, so this is really interesting because we can use the research of the testability and the output of the testability in the, the real scenario on real application and these uh, help us uh, to find more vulnerabilities and identify new uh, patterns that are inside the project so we can use uh, SAS tools with uh, new knowledge and we can identify more vulnerabilities <laughs> then we can yes we can um, use the the application of our customer as basis uh, uh, to identify new um, pattern so we can do pattern discovery and we can improve the project uh, again on real code that is running and then we can help uh, our customer to identify the right SaaS tool that can match uh, better for their environment so uh, we are a consulting company so we can help also the uh, our customers to identify the right tool uh, because uh, you know uh, Every, every company is different, uh, many languages inside the company, many technologies. So it is really important to have the right SaaS tool that uh, can, could be integrated in the pipeline in the right manner and uh, identify uh, using the, the testability partner, we can uh, uh, help and support better our customer to identify the right tool. So contribution, uh, as uh, if you are a consulting company like uh, IMQ Mind and Security that are doing uh, auditor penetration testing, uh, please contribute to the project. Uh, we, it, it is an open source project, so uh, use the output and uh, when you perform an activity, maybe you identify a new pattern and uh, please uh, help us to have uh, an updated library and uh, so the project uh, will be Better. Okay. Thanks, Matteo. Thank you. <coughs> okay, I take over. Um, maybe since there is a, a little bit of time, I, I just go quickly on the on the repository. I would like to, to give you an idea of what does it mean to, I don't know, to propose a pattern or... So you, you can go in the repository, you can go on the issues, and uh, you can create a new issues, and we prepare a few templates where you can, I don't know, propose a new pattern or you can update the patterns that is already in the catalog. You can be, you know, proactive and say, I think I, I would change the pattern in this and that way. Uh, the, the discovery rule doesn't, doesn't seem to be correct to me, whatever. So these are things that you can do. Um, and uh, if I go back to the presentation, so something we thought is what if we are able to, to come out uh, with, uh, for each one of the languages that we are targeting, with the kind of, top 10 obstacle for each one of these, of these languages. Uh, I mean, always loves top 10, right? So, um, and uh, is a bit, but, but at the same time, it's a very marketing, a nice always marketing thing. So, uh, and we thought that could be uh, a, a good uh, uh, follow uh, next step, say. Um, and so how do we want to handle that? So our first, these, these are really preliminary uh, results. So uh, they might change, okay? Uh, we use the results we got from our research. And what we try to create is a, a score for the SAS measurement. Uh, and essentially is a kind of weighted score, depending on the tools that were providing the wrong answer, where we were weighting a bit more those tools that are better performer than others. Okay. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, we have another score that is about the pattern discovery. So again, uh, here the idea is, to put together two dimensions. One is uh, the tools that have trouble, so how, how problematic is the obstacle for the SAS tools. And at the same time, the second dimension is how real this pattern is in the real world. Okay? With these two dimensions, by putting them together, we hope we are able to find out this, uh, this kind of uh, top 10. Here it was easy because uh, uh, all these patterns essentially were not solved by any of the tools. Okay? So here you have the maximum score that we were having for uh, for uh, for SAST. For SAST. Um, but in terms of uh, yeah occurrences in this data set of 3,000 applications, we can see some, some differences here. Hmm? And we hope to do the same also for JavaScript, Java, etc. But again, also this activity, 
If you are interested, if you want to help, we are very uh, interested. All right, so conclusion. Project starts now. Uh, we are targeting this testability dimension. We have some concrete results for SAST. You can contribute to those. Please do so. Join our uh, community and provide your, your, your expertise. Uh, let's try to devise together this top 10 testability pattern for SAST for the different languages. And something else that is in this European project that uh, we didn't discuss at all today, but that is really the, the kind of uh, research that is ongoing, is can we do the same for dust? Probably it's more difficult. Uh, but still, there is something that can be done also in that context. Can we do something like that for privacy? So what are the obstacles for privacy? If you want to test for privacy, what are the obstacles? There? Can we do something similar for machine learning? If you have a machine learning component, what makes it difficult to, uh, let's say, to test it for robustness, for fairness, for other kind of important uh, metrics this, uh, this thing should have? So that's it. Thanks a lot for being here, and we are open for questions. Can you can you speak up a bit? Across the different languages, do the patterns vary, or is there kind of similar patterns you see in all languages? Okay, uh, so I, I try to repeat the question. I'm not sure every, everybody. So you're, you're asking whether uh, we saw some uh, similarities in the patterns between different like, cross languages, right? So what we saw uh, just for PHP and JavaScript. Uh, when we did the, the, the work in our research was 30% overlapping. So in the sense that, yes, reflection is a problem for PHP, is a problem also for JavaScript, is probably a problem also for Java, and is a problem for all the languages, no doubt. Uh, there were, however, many peculiarities of, of the, so the 70% was really, I don't know, internal APIs that might differ a lot, uh, and, and other things uh, um, that yeah, are really language specific. But 30% was uh, what we saw, yeah. Yeah, please. Um, I'm just interested in the state um, along with text to to find these patterns. So when you get several languages, you get lots of patterns. So uh, if I get right, the, the question is on the discovery of the pattern in the real application, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, so indeed, that is, is a very interesting question because somehow we are using static analysis to discover the pattern, right? That you might have exactly the same problem that you have when you do static analysis for detecting vulnerabilities, not the pattern. However, what we saw, but this is just from our own experience, so I can't say that for a certain pattern you will not end up in those problems. Huh? But what we saw is that normally the discovery rule is much simpler. Because the discovery rule, I mean, ma in many cases is a kind of grep-like, Sometimes you have to do a grep like plus uh, you want to check that a parameter that is used in this uh, instruction is, uh, I don't know, is not a constant. So you have to do a bit of back propagation. Okay. And yes, you can have also in this case a problem of false positive, false negative, etc. Uh, so um, on the other end, I mean, what we saw is that is a, it seems to be at least from our experiment, a simpler problem, okay? I, I'm pretty sure you can create a pattern that is very complex to discover, uh, but uh, in general, I would say that it's not. Uh, and back to the question, how long it takes? Well, indeed, depends on how big the application is, the, no doubt, because you, you need to, to build the model of the entire application. That is something you have to do. And then you need to run the, qu the different queries, queries that normally are easy. So the query, the query itself doesn't take too much time. So. Yeah, sure. I'm not sure I get the question. Well, you know, you're going to find a lot of different patterns that are going to come up. Yeah. What would you say are your predictions as regards those patterns? What would it mean for the software? Because it's an important question. Uh, if you're asking, is that there's tons of cut and paste, there's cut very similar open source cut and projects out there. I imagine very, very broadly. Some predictions okay, that there could be 
So that the way that we're developing, right? mm-hmm. I, 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 we didn't think at all to that, but I, I, I think it's interesting. I, I understand. So what you're, what you're saying is, uh, can we try to understand whether there is some uh, code styling here mm-hmm. that uh, that could be changed in a way that or. I wouldn't be able to answer. I mean, we we, we didn't really work in that in that respect. But 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 I think it's inter- it's an interesting point. Yes, an interesting point. I don't know if you, any of the guys have uh, have an answer yet. Any other question? Sure. Um, the testability part of the GIS 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 so this is this is something this is something we have in the to-do list indeed. So to go on all of them and to try to really say this is easy to to remediate, this is easy, this is easy. We haven't done that yet. Uh, so I don't I don't have an answer for you, but but it's something we will that that is something we will answer for sure. Uh, uh, we we saw that many of them are uh, you know also some uh, uh, I don't know the arrow function for JavaScript, and that is something you can rewrite. Easily, right? So uh, it's just, I, I mean, of, of course, the tool could be just uh, extended to support the arrow function, whatever. But so what I'm saying is that in many cases, it's a really syntactic issue that you can solve. Uh, I say many, but I cannot quantify. So I, 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 need, I, I, I will come back to you on this. Uh, do you think it will be feasible to develop a preprocessor that replaces those? Uh, Abstractions uh, by code that doesn't uh, actually work in equivalent way at runtime, but for the purposes of flow analysis, yes. it results in a simpler code that can be then analyzed by any tool. Yes. So then you could pick any static analysis tool to uh, to analyze the flow and detect vulnerabilities. So. Uh, definitely. So this is something we we didn't discuss. We didn't have the time to discuss here. It is in the paper. So in the paper, we, we analyze, we, we consider three kinds of transformation. One transformation is semantic equivalent. So you take the arrow function and you transform in something that is equivalent. Easy, no problem. Something else is uh, you lose the semantic, but you keep the property of vulnerability detection. That is what you were mentioning, right? So you, you, ju- you just do this preprocessing for the purpose of SAST. Nothing else than that. And the third, the third kind of transformation we face was something like, we don't know what to do here. We need the help of the developer. So we would need something like an annotation for the develop, from the developer telling us, okay, how the flow would propagate. I mean, sometimes it's just a big function that is very difficult to, to analyze, but the developer could tell, okay, this variable is connected to that variable and this variable is connected to this variable. I, I mean, that is a kind of transformation that I think is very difficult to, I mean, I, I, I don't believe that the developer will do that, but sometime really there is nothing else you can do. Thank you. Right. Any other question? You mentioned the customer roles for, for the tools. I'm not sure if you mentioned like what is the time frame, if it's something that is ready or work in progress or nice to have in the future. So uh, that is something that is really a kind of uh, uh, internal feature, so we are experimenting with that a bit at SAP uh, for one of the tools that we have in our arsenal, uh, but uh, we didn't provide anything like that in the repository. Not because we don't want to, but we we cannot do that. Uh, so when, when we use commercial tools, we are not even allowed to say which are the commercial tools that we use. This is our internal policy, so we don't, we don't disclose that. Um, uh, however, uh, what we would like to do is uh, um, to create... Uh, uh, a functionality in the framework that you can run. Um, so the idea would be you run that functionality on the application without the rules, the custom rules, then you rerun with the custom rules, and we should be we should be able to provide back only the diff in terms of findings. So to see what the custom rules were able to uh, bring you as new value somehow. This is what we would like to put in place, but so far we have done that only for one tool, 
custom rules are very different from one tool to another. So ideally, you would like to find a way to, you know, to write one rule and then to translate that rule for all the different tools. Uh, so this is what we would like. So again, if anyone is interested, if you are interested, you want to take over that, uh, that uh, initiative, fantastic. <coughs> Any other question? Like, what's the process from the language manual to then extract uh, just the BD pattern? Okay, so that, that is really, you know, uh, varies a lot, but in general, you try to take uh, the documentation about the language, uh, so the, the language manual, and then you go chapter by chapter, and you try to, yeah, then, then you have to use your experience, right? So, uh, you, you start saying, okay, yeah, I believe this can be problematic for SAST. And you write the little code snippet and you run it, essentially. And you see whether indeed for some of the tools it's problematic or not. Uh, and you continue a bit in this process. And so what we try to do, I mean, we cannot claim comprehensiveness. I mean, we are not comprehensive. Okay. We try to follow a methodology. So chapter by chapter to try to identify the challenges, the obstacle. But then when you go on the internal APIs, probably we scheme, I don't know, 10% of the internal APIs in our catalog. There are 90% that still have to be, uh, to be coded. Can you automate that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe there is some, uh, some way. Maybe ChatGPT can do that for us. I don't know. Uh, uh, let's see. Ah, there is another question. So we are talking a lot about refactoring or preprocessing or custom rules. Is there any reason why this shouldn't be included in the SAS tools or this, or why is it not I think both directions are, uh, are valid. So if you, if you remember when we discussed about remediation, we mentioned three possibility, refactoring, SAS tool improvements, and uh, uh, the last one was the custom rules. So indeed, yeah, sure, the, 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 SAS, the SAS tool uh, can uh, uh, run our catalogs, can see uh, which are the pain points, which are the strengths also, okay? And it can decide to, you know, to invest uh, on support some of those patterns. Uh, uh, but it, say is is not this is you so the the answer to your question is yes they it can be done also at the level of sas tool um yeah i don't see other hands so then uh, we can close a bit in advance so thanks a lot for your time thanks a lot for all the questions and please join our community help us to yeah to achieve this vision